Hi, this is Scott Bradfield, and uh, this is the latest episode of Reading Great Books in the Bathtub. We've kind of gone off on a series of kind of little fugue uh, uh, lectures lately about different writers and, and their kind of life work, because it doesn't seem that most most of the good writers, when we read them, uh, you know, they just if they're good, you can just keep going back to them. You don't need to have anyone explain them to you. So I'm trying to introduce you to some of the writers that I like. And I thought t today or tonight, I try to start on something uh, quite a difficult uh, challenge for me in the, in the course of these lectures, which is to ask the question, what the hell do we do with all the goddamn books written by Joyce Carol Oates? What the hell? Where do we put them? And I, I like Joyce Carol Oates. I've enjoyed her work for a long time. And I'm think I know I haven't see I know there's a whole pile of these books somewhere. They kind of invest you know I, I I kind of collect books as you notice and I like to kind of have hardcovers of of books when they come out in first editions. And Joyce Carol Oates is very easy to pick up in first editions. They're often remaindered, and she publishes. She must publish five or ten a year. Uh, and the thing with Joyce Carol Oates is that they're almost always pretty good. They're almost always good. And they're almost always really good. And sometimes they're just good. And the longer the book is, the less good it gets. That's been my that's my one rule of thumb for Joyce Carol Oates, is that when you see the really long books by her, I read one recently called My Sister, My Love. It was a big, fat, dense book. And it just kind of goes nowhere. And she wrote a book, big book called The Accursed, which had some great stuff in it. It was a very dark, kind of weird gothic melodrama and, and that went nowhere um, and some of her large books those winter thern books and so forth the bigger the books get the less interesting they are they tend to just kind of wear you down but her best work and this is her newest um, I did a little review of this Night Gaunts is she must be publishing five or six, I, she's one of those writers you go to the bookshop and, you, and, and you, you know I go in fairly regularly and you realize that in the three weeks that you haven't been in the bookshop, she's had six more books out. And it, it's it's sort of exhausting. It's kind of like being drowned in, uh, in in donuts. You know, you like a donut, but then you get so many of the donuts. So it's really, you kind of have to go in and out of the Joyce Carol Oates books. But what I, I want to ask is, what the hell do we do with them all? Because I every few, uh, every year or two, or every time I move, certainly, I've got to get rid of some of them. We just made a big move from London. Now these are, there's three piles of books by, you can see them there on the chair and in the front here. Those are the books I have just re available that I could find on the shelves. But they get everywhere. They're kind of like paper clips. You know, you just, every time you open a drawer you find another paper clip. And as I'm trying to find all the Joyce Carol Oates books, I think I've got them all and I, and I already see there's some of my favorites. Um, one of my favorite Oates books is a is the shorter ones, the short novels are her best things, is Black Water, the kind of horror novel about being a woman being drowned. It's based on Betty Jo, the, jo the Kopechnik story, the Teddy Kennedy, uh, Chappaquiddick drowning. Um, and that's like a kind of a brilliant, really upsetting uh, narrative that you can't put down. Now, um, again, I, I'm going to go through these now because I just kind of got to get rid of some of them. The newest one is Night Gaunts. She started to, uh, she's always had a kind of horrific, uh, horrorish uh, slant to her work. Like Blackwater, which is told from the viewpoint of a young girl who goes off with an older man like Teddy Kennedy called the Senator in that book. She goes off and she's kind of, you know, because of the her, uh, the, she writes a lot about young women who are too impressed by powerful men. And she writes about that a lot, and that almost always does. It, it always ends badly for the women. It's a very recurring motif. So younger girls with older older men in their lives. Um, in in Blackwater, we go out on this 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 drive with this girl, and we the car crashes. The senator pisses off and leaves us in the car. And in the course of the book, we reflect on this girl's life and her relationship with the senator as the car fills with water. That's a perfect Oates narrative. She really gets the smothering and the claustrophobia of her generally female characters in this world that doesn't quite work for them. 
So that, that's a great little short novel. The longer books don't can't capture that intensity. But most of her stories have some sort of element like that, kind of a horrific element, a horror element. And in the past 20 years or so, she's been publishing a lot of books such as Night Gaunts, which actually have supernatural aspects to them. They tend to be the Oates fictional focus tends to be on the realistic lives of her characters. So, for, ex exist, for example, in Night Gaunts, we have an H.P. Lovecraft-type character who is a young boy who lives in this decaying old mansion in Providence and who is uh, almost buried in all this old junk of his family. And he starts to see these visions that haunted his father. H.P. Lovecraft's father was died, died in an asylum. Now, the psychological quality of the stories is much more interesting to Oates than uh, Supernatural, though she has stories with a lot of supernatural elements in them. Um, so let me look through some of these just to sort of send you guys off somewhere. What I will first of all suggest is to look for um, these short story collections or the short novels. Stay away from the big novels. Um, I mean, for, I mean <laughs> this is an old... Oates novel called Child Walls. Again, it's a murder. There's a murder story in it. Uh, it's pretty... I, I may get rid of that. Um, she wrote a number... Because she writes so goddamn much, she's written a number of kind of thrillers under the name Rosamond Smith. I don't know these. I suspect they're good. She, she's almost never bad. But at the same time, I don't know where to what to do with them. Um, these are the books where she sent, tends to do best is the short novels. These are really the, the strongest Oates books to my mind because what she's best at is communicated best in a shorter novel. Um, here's, an, here's an exception. I think this is one of the few, I reviewed this 20, 30 years ago. You must remember this, which is one of the few big books of hers, which I thought was quite good. And it's about, again, another young girl who's in a relationship with her uncle, who's a boxer. And one of Oates's many fascinations is with boxing. And she's quite interested in that kind of strong, brutal, uh, submissive quality of her, her women. And uh, uh, until they become, they stop being submissive, which is when they start to become kind of dangerous themselves. Uh, so this is actually quite a good one. You must remember this. And I'll probably keep that one. A book of essays. She's got lots of books of essays. She writes tons of reviews and essays. I I'll probably keep that because I, I might want to do something on it. This is one of her few books. This is this is done pretty well. I think it was an Oprah Book Club choice. I haven't read it, but it's basically a series of stories about a marriage falling apart. And writing a book through a sequence of stories is a good idea for uh, for her. Now here we get into one of the dozens. Now again, Oates has written, I think I, I read an article about her maybe 10 years ago. She had written at that time 800 short stories. She's probably got more than a thousand by now. Her short stories, I've never read a bad short story by, by Oates. Never read a bad one. They're always kind of interesting and they tend to wind you up. Uh, here's one of those tales of mystery and suspense. This is where I would really kind of focus on. I think that this this packaging of her stories as suspense stories or mystery or grotesque stories tends to bring out her best work. And I'm going to keep that, and I'm going to get rid of the more dangerous while I'm at it. Here's Crossing the Board, I don't know, another short story collection. Um, I just don't, i got to get rid of some of this stuff. Uh, here's another one, Tales of Mystery and Suspense. Those tend to be a better books. Man Crazy is a short novel, and that gives me hope. The shorter novels tend to be better. Raven's Wing, I don't remember. I think I read this one, actually. She does, she, she really gets into the lives of her characters, and in, particularly in these shorter stories, and I believe that's a good one. This is an old one, Nightside. I think it's one of her earlier collections. And Nightside, the title story is definitely a supernatural story, or it verges on this. Again, you never know if it's supernatural occurrences 
or if it's the impressions of your or her characters. But there's a seance. That pre people investigate seances in the Victorian era in night side and it's one of the stories I remember most vividly over the past 34 years. Mariah I liked. It kind of goes nowhere. I think I'm going to get rid of it actually. It's again another it's a life of a woman and she tells it in a sequence of stories. That tends to be a good way of structuring things for her. Because her big books don't like don't work. Another short story collection. I'm going to get rid of that one just randomly. Uh Tales of Transgression, when you get into transgression, that's, again, they tend to be the more suspense stories, and they tend to uh, have something going for them. Here's another Rosamond Smith book. Which ones am I keeping? Jesus. Now I'm going to get rid of, again, I got rid of the, the exact same, I got rid of just as many books as you see here when I moved from London, just stacks of these books. And not because I don't like them. I just can't keep them anywhere. I don't have any room. Um, Rosamond Smith, Nemesis. I think these are probably pretty good. Elmore Leonard says something nice about it. He's got good taste. I remember this is a good novel, American Ap Appetites. It was another murder story. She does a lot about murders, and it's about a wife who accidentally kills her husband in a court case. And I think this, this was one, if I was going to do a, a, a review of her work over her lifetime, I would probably go back to American Appetites. Uh, here's the two books I like the best. Just off the top of my head. These are the first two of the early books where she actually started to package her, to her, her psychological horror or her suspense stories. One is called Haunted Tales of the Grotesque and The Collector of Hearts, New Tales of the Grotesque. These are really good books. And they're stories that you don't quite expect. You don't know how they're... You, they, she does stories that you never would expect. I'll never forget. There's a story called The Sky Blue Ball. It's the opening story of this. It's a good example. It's a very short story for her. And it's about a little girl, a young girl in the backyard. And while she's wandering around playing in the yard, it's, kind of, it's again, this very kind of gothic, overgrown, upper New York uh, uh, houses. Everyone's kind of working class, and there's cars on bricks and all that sort of stuff. And they're, they're kind of seedy yards. A big ball, a, a baseball falls into the yard, or a ball falls into her yard. And she looks at it, and it's kind of crummy looking, and she looks at it, and, she, and no one says anything. And the little girl picks it up, and she throws it back over the fence. And the next morning, she goes out, and the ball's back there, back in the yard. Oates manages to turn that into a kind of suspenseful story. And she, she can take one idea, and she tends to drive it right down the road, right as far as she can drive it. Um, there's also stories in here which... You know, they're like, there's a couple of post-mortem, at least one post-mortem story where the woman is obviously at a, at a, at a car accident and she's, she's gone to a suburb where she's slowly recognizing that she's dead. Um, and there's a few supernatural stories, as I recall, but mainly they're these odd little, little strange stories that I just mentioned. Here's another pile of them. Dear Husband stories. I'm sure they're good. I can't keep them all new. The visionary experience in literature. So here's one where she's actually trying to take one idea. I, I think I've read parts of it. I'll probably hold on to that. Lies of the Twins. I'm kind of tempted to keep these. I keep keeping these Rosamond Smith books. The Grave Digger's Daughter. Um, what is it? 400 pages? Oh God! Even the short ones are four. It's 400 pages. I'm gonna get rid of that one. Um, Sourland. More stories. Gripping and nerving, blah, blah, blah. Again, this is like, they're, they're all about 400 pages worth of stories. This is just the past 20 years, 15 years in here. I'm going to get rid of that because I'm never going to read it. Solstice, short novel. I've held on to this for a long time because it's a short novel. Marriage Falling Apart, Perfect Oats Territory. It's not 500 pages or 800 pages um, like some of her worst books. Okay, I guess we'll keep that. And here's Rosamond Smith again. Double Delight. And I've kept a couple of Rosamond Smith books, and I always look at it, you know, if I actually decide I have to read these books, I could probably go find this anywhere. You're not going to have trouble finding almost any of the, the uh, George Carol Oates novels. And you'll find them pretty easily, and you'll also find many of them remaindered. So if you hit your B. Dalton or wherever you're your local 
bookstore. They'll have lots of these around the remainder. That's where I get most of these books. Um, so I'm going to get rid of this just to make room on the space on the shelves. And then I think I'll try to avoid reading any more oats for a while. Um, or buying any more oats. Because she is one of those writers who's always so good, she tends to be inside her characters' heads. So she's not that kind of objectively clear writer that you get in uh, in some of the writers we've talked to, like Brian Moore or um, um, Raymond Carver or Tobias Wolf. She tends to get into the emotional and psychological ex experiences of her characters, most of whom are women. And she... Uh, she knows how to, how to wind you up. So this is a whole new sequence of stories coming out through, this, through these mysterious presses doing a couple. It seems that they're doing two or three of these a year. Um, I wouldn't start with Night Gaunts. I would start with The Collector of Hearts. If you've never read Oats, or you think you've read Oats and you were a little bored, try that. That's a really good collection. And Haunted, which is also a good collection. And if you do go look for a novel... Um, go back to one of the older ones because I find most of the late novels are just too long. Uh, I think this is a good one, American Appetites. So she's good. She's always good. She's never bad. She's oppressively pr prolific, and uh, you, you can only hold, you can only find room for so many of these books. Uh, and uh, they're worth. She's definitely worth reading, particularly if you're if you're a writer, you learn a lot from her. And if you're a reader, I, I remember I had a friend in London. She could just read through book after book. And she loved Oats because she could just sit and read these books, you know, these five, six, eight hundred books and just move on to the next one. And she would just always just be able to ingest these things. But I can't do that with Oats. And I, and I, uh, I do warn you against some of those really long books. Okay, that's our Joyce Carol Oates. I don't think we'll talk about her again, but I do like her. And uh, I like her short stories quite a lot. Okay, bye.